Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelava, and this is episode 5 of Let's Play Greece in Victoria 2. We left off having fabricated a uh, Cassus Belli against Iraq to just go and annex them, which will push us fairly close to uniting all of our lands in something resembling, I guess, a shell of the old Alexandrian Greek Empire. And eventually we'll be able to declare war on the Ottomans again to take that final core and allow us to reform the Byzantine Empire, although we're probably not going to do that, just because I would rather stay Greece, at least for the moment. Uh, that being said, the decision does come with a minus 10 to our infamy, which makes it very tempting to do, otherwise we're going to have to sit around a little bit. That being said, we can always just make that decision later, and I'm sure later in the game we'll still want that minus 10 to infamy. Uh, one big issue, and we won't be able to declare war on the Ottomans for a while due to it, is that they are friendly with both the French and the Russians, so that is just not really something we want to risk. However, they are a presidential dictatorship, so fairly soon rebels should overthrow their state, and I believe that may even give us the option to go ahead and just... Uh, what exactly am I trying to say? That should give us the option to break our truce with them, and also destroy their diplomatic relations, because I'm fairly sure that's how that works. You'll notice they are having a bit of rebel problems just throughout. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to discover if uh, releasing Bulgaria as a puppet before Bulgarian nationalists uh, achieved their demands would make it so that the entire state would be our puppet, or if they would just occupy or just not be able to enforce their demands. So it's kind of just up in the air where that would go. Uh, hopefully it'll go in a way that works out for us. And at any rate, we're going to just unpause and keep going a little bit. Uh, we're going to have to... Oh, unfortunately, there we go. Spain managed to get Palestine and part of Egypt, which is really upsetting. Well, not really really upsetting, but it's definitely not something great for us. Apparently, Iraq just managed to get an ally in the form of Hejaz. So they're going to have to deal with us, or we'll have to deal with them one way or the other. It also means we're going to not declare war just yet, at least long enough for our navy to drop off some forces on the other side of the Iraqi, or well, on the other side of Hejaz, and just avoid the Iraqis. Uh, okay, wait, no. <laughs> on the other side of Hejaz, avoiding the Hejazi navy and dealing only with the Iraqis. I don't know how I messed that up quite as much as I did, but there we go. Uh, at any rate... Now, uh, we still have to worry about colonization. Our colonial ventures are not quite done yet. We also should probably grab a technology, and it really looks like we need one for our industry. Or really just for our economy, because we are not doing very well with that. Hemorrhaging money, even though we're at peace and have a large colonial empire. We did just turn up our funding for our army, because that's pretty necessary for what's about to happen. Let's get these guys in position. And in fact, we have a considerable navy, so we could probably just go pre-blockade Hejaz. And hopefully that'll make it so that they realize that they shouldn't declare war on us, or call, or they shouldn't answer the call to arms from their allies and just allow us to take over their state. That would be preferable. Military access request from Austria. Austria is basically collapsing right now. Oop. And we can invest in Africa, where we're currently battling the French for control over this area. And we have to wait until July for the rest of our colonies to be at a point where we can invest in them any further. Hmm. Let's just push deeper, deeper into the rest of Africa. We will eventually have to cut off other countries' access. It looks like the British are starting to colonize, but we can probably meet them around right there. Maybe. Maybe. One, two, one, two, three. All right, yeah, who knows? Uh, we'll try to, we'll at least get Zambia, and that'll cut off all of this area to be ours for sure, unless someone takes over Ethiopia, which they may. So we'll have to watch out for that, and hopefully no one else will take Ethiopia, and if they do, we'll just rush in and take Amhara. The AI typically doesn't colonize these two regions, or these three, in fact, so we might not even have to worry about that no matter what occurs. Uh, we'll set a rally point in Hala, Haliab, Halaib, Halaib, in Halaib, Alliance oh, Offer from Spain. We'll accept that, even though in the long term I really do want to fight the Spanish, not ally them. And where did that one army go? Alright, they're already on their way, that's very good news. 
will be able to take over Iraq fairly quickly if everything works out as, uh, as it should. And then we'll be able to lower our military funding again. And anyway, we're probably going to be in a fairly peaceful... Uh, well, just a very peaceful few minutes, a, fe a peaceful episode, probably, other than the conquest of Iraq, which is going to be probably the most we actually end up doing this time, just because of our infamy. Other than that, it'll be a lot of just internal management, which I'm not really sure what we'll have to do for internal management, other than just keep colonizing Africa. Uh, it would be awesome if we could upgrade our naval bases a bit more. We're already upgrading everything that we can, and we don't really have any more money. So that's basically just where we're at for that. However, we do have a decent colonial empire, and hopefully it'll get better still. Looks like Hejaz actually did join the war, so enjoy your free blockade. Alliance offer from Sweden, they're a bit too far away to be helpful. And Iraqi armies are just kind of pressing over into our territory but we'll go counter them in a moment or two. It's really kind of odd how much we're hemorrhaging money. I didn't realize that we were doing, well, so many things, I suppose. But we do have a large navy, especially for colonization, so that's probably where a lot of the expense is coming from. Looks like Lombardia has fallen to the Italians. I wonder if the Poles will get anything. I believe they're in the war with the help of the British. So yeah, the British and Austrian, or the British and Polish are probably going to push the Austrians even further. So it is a bad day for the Austrian Empire. We are also allied to Serbia and Romania, so it's possible they could drag us into a war against the Austrians as well. And, you know, I'm actually kind of fine with that. Uh, probably not if they do it soon. If they do it too soon, then it'll be bad for us since we really just don't have the greatest economy right at the moment. But I don't think it's something that'll kill us or anything like that. We also have been producing quite a lot of an army, although it looks like we haven't bothered to keep up on rally points, which is a little annoying, but nothing terrible. We'll just have to group all these troops together and send them away. And we'll bring a third army into the Iraq War, just so that we can conquer them a little bit quicker and get back to, well, more or less stable government get back to the point where we will hopefully not be in such a budget deficit and keep getting these technologies. As those are really just economic technologies seem to be the most vital thing at the moment. And uh, other than that, we'll just keep an eye on the Ottomans, hope that their nation will eventually collapse into just anarchy and declare war on them. If that happens, then that's great. If not, then we're probably going to have to avoid conflict for the near future, as that's the only free Cassus Belly we have. Now, it doesn't look like we're forgetting any technologies, so that's very good. And I believe we only had to wait until the end of July to colonize further in Africa. So hopefully that will happen in just a few days. And there we go, create a protectorate there. And a protectorate there. Now we could press all the way up and try to take Sahara. I kind of want to do that. Hopefully the Germans and the Italians will keep each other distracted for a while. Really the most important thing is that we press into Zambia. And then we're just going to have to maintain against the French long enough for... Uh, control of Zambia to go through. Once that happens, it'll be kind of cool if we could take Herero land, or if we could take this state that connects. Let me see if I can get it to show up. We want that blue state so we can just get another port, although it would be a little difficult to ensure that, especially with the British starting to crawl up. Uh, we might even have to give up Zambezi. That might just end up being a British protectorate. Uh, really, though, we have a lot of Africa already, so it's not really too much to give in on, and we're probably not going, we're definitely not going to beat the French there, since it doesn't look like they're getting into any other colonial disputes with any other states. Hmm, so that all considered, we may as well press as far as we can and take the Sahara, and everywhere else will just kind of fall in line. As soon as we take Zambia, then we don't have to worry about anybody being able to get into Cambizi or anything in this region. Uh, are we still making boats? That's a big question. 
it doesn't look like we are, so we should probably build at least a few more just in the areas of Europe that we can build them easily. Oh, that's 29. That's quite a lot. Well, we'll just build a small number. We don't really want to waste all of our money on boats, but we also do need to be able to win, or at least delay the French in East Angola. That, that's really the ultimate objective, because if that falls through, then we'll have to keep will be pushed back further and further into this part of Africa. And that's the biggest thing we want to avoid. We might even give up on the Sahara or Timbuktu in order to preserve it. Because really these are just empty wasteland areas and don't really give us much. But that'll be in November by the looks of it. This area will be all the way next April. And that'll be in October. So we're probably going to have to worry about that, but hopefully not so much. At any rate, let's uh, keep plucking up armies and keep invading Iraq. We actually probably have enough forces there already. We are still losing a bit of money. That's mainly just because we're building up our navy as much as we are. Alright, Sweden really wants to ally us, and I don't want to just destroy our relations with them, but I also really don't want them as an ally. Just because what could they do? They could help us get into a fight with Russia, which we don't really want. Oh, interesting. It looks like the Austrians are actually pulling together. They might might get to maintain their empire to whatever extent they still have it. Very interesting. At any rate, we'll push through Iraq, make peace with them fairly quickly. I don't imagine Hejaz will really want to stay in the war once we get to the point where... I mean, their ally is entirely occupied. And we might even just land on them a little bit. We could even take Mecca, which would be interesting, but we, we can't do that. Not in any real sense of it. I am definitely upset, though, about the Spanish taking over uh, all of this in Egypt. That really is going to slow down our reconquest. Alright, and the French are definitely winning here. We really do just need to prevent them from getting too above us, and if they get to too above us, then we have to worry about cutting off the colonial endeavors somewhere else. Hopefully, once this naval base completes, though, we should have enough power. Oh, well, that won't even be until April, so that'll be after one of our protectorates is ready to go. Ooh, okay, so we need to take a loan in order to prevent ourselves from going bankrupt. So we'll just do that. Fight the pandemic influenza. I found out that if you just click that before taking a loan, you will go bankrupt just immediately, just like that. And that's really terrible and just pretty annoying. Alright, so it looks like the French are battling us over Timbuktu as well, which is pretty annoying. And if we end up just taking over this part of Algeria, that'll make everything horribly unesthetic, which, I mean, really is probably just going to happen anyway, but still we don't want to seek that out. Uh, so that sucks. We're pretty much just delayed from achieving anything there. We could stop with all this colonialism in the Sahara. I'm not going to do that yet. We'll see how long we can just play every end at once. And just hope not to lose. Hmm. Alright, well, we'll see how it goes. Our people are 17% reactionary and 20% socialist. That'll probably lead to some fighting later on. Gotta keep intervening immediately so we don't just lose all of our population to civil strife. Which is pretty much the least awesome form of strife in this game. Now we'll go ahead and just land on Hejaz. Just because we can. Oh, you know, we're going to have even less colonial power once we take over Iraq. So, we're actually going to... We will withdraw from Timbuktu. That might just give it to the French immediately. Hopefully not. And we'll just invest more in East Angola. Yeah, there we go. They immediately got that. Hopefully they don't go straight for the Sahara. No, they went for West Sahara. So that's kind of cool. The French will block us off from anyone over there. As much as that's not really all that awesome, I would prefer that to really a lot of the other things that could have happened. 
All right, so the British are definitely taking over Zambezi. We're not going to even bother with that. Hopefully they can't touch Zambia right now, otherwise we're going to have to rethink things quite a bit. And we'll probably leave these armies here just because they'll give us a good front against really anyone we're going to want to fight. All right, and yeah, we're just hemorrhaging money right now. Not the best thing. Well, not really. Yeah, actually, we are hemorrhaging that money. All right, propose peace. Cool. And yeah, that took up quite a bit of our, quite a bit of that. Why are we losing all of this money? I'm not really sure. And we can't even afford anything, really. Alright, we will start tariffing our people considerably. I know that's going to do a lot of negative things to our economy, but we really need it just for the moment. Alright, we managed to take Zambia. And the Sahara. And now we can just focus on the slow task of just filling in all the rest of the areas we're already at. Uh, we will just go ahead and withdraw from East Angola, since we don't really need to worry about that anymore. Alright, and now I'll actually start creating colonies. I'm not really sure what the actual difference is between a colony and just an original protectorate, other than that it costs more. And actually, we'll withdraw from there and go into Wadia in case someone takes over Sokoto. They are a U.S. spearling, but that doesn't seem to stop everybody all the time. Just keep creating all these colonies. And just get rid of all the notifications is pretty much the real goal with that. Alright, so there we go. Hopefully that will help us out economically in some vague way. Greek Asia is getting ever closer to the rest of Greece. And we're still at war, so let's get out of here. And peace in our time, more or less. Alright, our people are getting pretty militant. Which is not ideal. Hopefully, though, we'll be able to pass some social reforms in a moment, get some better health care for everybody. Uh, once we get to six unrest, or six militancy, we should be able to do that. Oh, no. Oh, okay, there we go. So that's pretty cool. Uh, here you go, everybody. Get some low health care. We got steam turbines, so that's great. And we'll go ahead and get investment banks, and then we'll worry about really anything else after that. 52k in debt. Our economy really fell apart. Oh, okay, so we're not able to tax our people more than 50%. Apparently we switched to a laissez-faire economic party, which I wasn't really anticipating. So instead... Hmm... That's unfortunate. Our only jingoist party is laissez-faire. Well, we don't really need to worry about... We don't really need to worry about military adventurism for a little while. So we'll probably go for our liberal party. They are pro-military, so that's at least somewhat helpful. And we'll just tax everybody to 100% just because. Although that does allow us to just get rid of tariffs. All right, everyone will be a little bit more socialist, which is not really a problem unless they start rebelling, which they might. They very well might. All right, and now we'll just pay off our loans and worry about our colonies. Hmm. Ooh, people want laissez-faire quite a bit. That's unfortunate. That'll really mess up our tax base in the future. Hopefully not too much. Interesting that the Persians loaned us money. 
especially considering we occupy half their countryside. It's not really an obvious place I would go for a loan. Alright, and we just need more money and we'll be able to upgrade our naval bases even more. And that'll be pretty good. Denmark wants an alliance. Kind of the same deal with Denmark as it is with Sweden, is that it just doesn't really make much sense for us to ally them, because what are they really going to offer us? Alright, and let's actually check out our factories. We'll, we'll try to open all of them. And it looks like our factories are doing alright. A few of them aren't making any money whatsoever, but enough of them seem to be. And we could just help them out a little. So we'll probably do that more in a little. Uh, right now, we're mainly just going to focus on getting our naval bases up just so we can complete the colonization of the parts of Africa we're already in. And not really worry about it too much. Uh, once we manage to get our naval bases up to a decent place, uh, then we will start worrying more about upgrading our army. As we do kind of have a third-rate military right now, it would be nice to get that up to more of a first world, you know, actually significant colonial empire sort of level, since that's what we're trying to become. Alright, we got a couple brand new protectorates. Portugal is actually ranked 17, so we should probably just cut them off as quickly and thoroughly as possible. Just because that would be unfortunate if they, you know, managed to become some great secondary power and colonize all of this away from us. I would feel pretty dumb for letting that happen. We discovered a mummy, that's pretty cool. Alright, and we can't really do anything about naval bases right now. Although they do get very expensive in the future. Looks like British forces are here in the Ottoman Empire for whatever reason. Ottoman Empire which is allied to France. Alright, cool. So the British are actually using our territory into the Ottomans as a big line to march armies into places in the world uh, where we would hopefully want them to help us later on. Uh, right now it's not really helpful, but it is kind of neat. Uh, we'll drop our taxes on the richest people. Sorry, poor, you're really going to have to bear the brunt of this for a while, but, you know, I mean, that's uh, that's really just the era, man. We can't really do much about that. I think if we park our navies, we will deal less uh, in the way of having to replenish all of their all the resources they're using, so we'll go ahead and do that right now. Egypt has seven states left, which means it's, they're too big still for us to actually just go in and take over. Uh, and let's check out their civilization level. They're actually civilizing fairly well, which is a worrying thing, because we don't want them to civilize. We won't be able to conquer them easily after that if, if they do. Uh, we will send all of our diplomatic influence into Egypt right now to try to just break them from anyone who will protect them, and then we'll just be a bad protector and take some of their lands probably pushing in to Middle Egypt and Upper Egypt, first of all. Oh, looks like poor Poland didn't actually get any of their cores back. Sorry, Poland. That's pretty unfortunate. I believe that's all the colonies we can create, so we're pretty much up to speed on that. And we'll just hope for the uh, Ottoman regime to fall apart. It might not happen fairly soon. If their truce with us ends, we'll probably just try to influence them more and see what happens. We might have to wait until another major war before we can actively, actively intervene in their country. And while that's annoying, it's not really problematic in any real way. And it looks like our economy is really pulling it through, which is great news. We'll keep investing in our factories, try to just be helpful. We really don't have very many people uh, actually working in our factories. Uh, we will give our people acceptable minimum wages, though, just because we want to encourage factory workers. That, that's really the big thing in the current moment.
And let's see, what do we need technologically? Oh, we really need railroads. We haven't even begun to get railroads. And hopefully our people will get to six infamy or six uh, six militancy without launching some sort of major rebellion. That would be very nice. Oh, and not just Egypt, we should also be influencing Sokoto. Get them out of the American sphere, and then we can go ahead and just destroy them ourselves. Alright, and we basically cut the Portuguese off. Really hope they don't get to rank 16. I'm not even sure where rank 16 would be. Among just all the countries in the world. Huh. Oh no, if the Germans unify anymore, which I don't think they will. Oh, they might though. I don't think the North Germans will be able to press into France though. They really have been having a rough time of it earlier on. So we're probably fine with that. Just where we're at right now. Alright, and the more of Africa we take, the better our economy is going to do. Kiva offers us an alliance. No, no thanks. Alright, we can get railroads now. We'll just start working our way through the industry screen. We aren't going to be going into wars anytime soon, except if someone attacks us, but we're allied to the British, so hopefully they won't. And the British like us decently enough. The Russians don't like us too much, so we might want to focus on... Uh, just increasing our relations with them a little bit. Other than that, though, we have a pretty decent set of buffers. Romania and the Ottomans block us off from the Russians, except we actually do touch the Russian Empire now, since they did take that portion of Persia and we then took Gre er, uh, we then took Iraq. So that might be interesting. Everyone else who's relevant, such as Spain, is already our ally. Italy is probably going to hate us and may declare war, but we just built up our navy, admittedly with very obsolete ships, but we did build it up considerably. Keep upgrading these naval bases. And let's see if our wealthy are actually doing anything. It doesn't look like they're doing much at all. Unfortunately, our capitalists get money based on just the money brought in by our industry, and our industry isn't really bringing much money in at the moment. So we're not really facing the best of luck in that regard. Luckily, though, our truce with the Ottomans will break apart fairly soon, and then we can try to influence them as well. We just got banned from Egypt. And we're actually getting through the years fairly quickly. We're not going to worry about getting more railroad techs for at least a while, just since no one's building railroads anyway in our country. But that'll be the moment when we realize we can go more towards a laissez-faire economic policy is around the time that our people are able to build railroads fairly consistently. So, yeah, for now, we're not really going to worry about it. Although that will be a sign of, of good times to come. We might want to start. We might want to stop taxing our poor as much as we are right now, so more of them might make it to the middle class, and then from that into the rich. Apparently, our capitalists are getting none of their needs met. None of them are at all. So that's terrible. Uh, it explains why none of them are really doing anything. And we have two capitalists in all of Greece. Now we have zero. Okay. Um. Yeah. Hmm. That's not good. We'll tax the rich, since it's mainly just aristocrats, we'll tax them at like 50%, and that'll let us tax the poor slightly less. Hmm. Yeah, so right now I guess we'll try to get our people into the middle classes a little bit more. And then once they're in the middle class, they should stay there. They'll probably have a little difficulty staying rich or becoming and then staying rich. And you know, we're just going to subsidize all of our factories. Just keep everybody employed. Alright, we've got two glorious new protectorates. And we'll fully cut off the Portuguese. And then at some point we're going to want to roll up. And actually we should probably do that now just since Spain can conceivably colonize at the moment. 
we'll just rush up and take over the Libyan desert, hopefully discourage them from going there as well. Alright, and yeah, so that'll hopefully work out decently well. Also, by pushing through all of these technologies right now, we're eventually going to get ourselves in a point... Ooh. Alright, uh, we'll be able to get ourselves in a point where... What was I even going to say? This crisis kind of threw me off entirely. Yeah, I have no idea where I was going with that. Um, hmm. Alright, well, the crisis is going to be a problem. Looks like Romania versus Austria. We really don't want the Austrians to win. Alright, we'll see if it says anyone supports the Austrians, and if not, then we'll just kind of go for it, uh, supporting the Romanians. Alright, looks like it both falls on us, so we'll just go ahead and back them. Alright, and they got it for free, and we got a nice boost to our prestige. It's a little gamey being able to do that, but I mean, it, it works out pretty well. So that works out. Yeah, that actually worked out very nicely. Hopefully we'll be able to just deconstruct the Austrian Empire piece by piece by doing that. And that'll be cool. Get us some decently loyal subject-ish states. And, uh, yeah, other than that, finish up our colonialism. I really don't know where I was going with what I began, what I began to say a little earlier. Um... We subsidize our factories to make sure that our poor would have jobs. Uh, we'll probably increase the minimum wages just so that things work out decently well for them over time. Really sucks that we don't have any capitalists whatsoever in our entire country. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we'll be able to make that, we'll be able to rectify that in time. I'm not really sure how likely that is. Austria wants to ally us, uh, the, hmm, maybe. It looks like the Summer Palace was just torched by the Americans, of all people, which is pretty weird. Interesting, though. Uh, hmm. So I don't really want to ally the Austrians, because that seems like a bag of worms, although they are a natural ally against the Italians and their ambitions. And we do want to keep the Italians in check, because we do have Greek Sicily. And although we do want the Romanians and Serbs to be strong, mainly the Serbs, so they can take lands from the Ottomans, it's not really something that's very necessary at the moment. So we'll just kind of keep playing through, running out the clock and all that. Earning some decent money. Now, we do have some people who are just kind of dying of poverty. I don't really think there's very much we can do about that. It looks like it's mainly just farmers and laborers, probably in the colonies. And they're just going to die for a while. There's not much we can do about it in a really in a realistic sense. There's really just not much. Well, we have a few capitalists. Oh, in Greek Sicily. Okay, so we have seven capitalists in Greece. Let's actually just uh, deselect everybody and look at only them. They are partially Orthodox, so that's cool. A lot of them are either Greek or South Italian, so hopefully they will manage to subsist a little bit. And let's actually check up on them. No life needs are getting met. Okay, um, we'll stop taxing them. We will tax the poor again. And we are probably going to just start making our army. And that'll give the poor more areas to go. Which will hopefully prevent them all from starving to death. Alright, so, to build up our army, we're going to have to think about this a little bit. I, I usually build our armies into groups of uh, 30 units, but that's going to be a little hard to achieve, just moving forces back and forth throughout the entire empire, which is something we're really, <clears throat> really going to have to do, just because we're so spread out geographically. And then there's the question of how are we going to combine the armies that we're trying to build with the armies that already exist. And the answer is really going to just come down to it's going to be a lot, and we're going to just hope to get a decent amount going. So 
So we'll get almost three full armies out of Africa. Now we'll have one less artillery than we would like, but that's not really a terrible problem. And there will be two armies. I'm not sure if I want to go less on the artillery. We'll go less on less on infantry. Actually, we don't want Greek infantry. That's the trick to it. Is if we have Greek infantry and they take losses, it'll get rid of Greek pops. So we'll put Greek forces as artillery as often as we can, so that they'll be the last ones to die in fighting. And there we go. So we'll get some. We'll get a decent amount of forces. Our armies will still be kind of just shoveled together randomly. That shouldn't be too problematic. As long as we're going to have to get more army techs, but we'll do that after we get enough industrial techs that it'll hopefully work out decently well for us. There we go, we've got ourselves the Libyan Desert, and now we can finally go press into Kenya, and then we'll take over the area around Sokoto, and then just fill in over here. The AI never takes Eritrea, which is now Djibouti. Oh yeah, there it is, Djibouti. So the AI never takes that, which is pretty weird, since you would think they would want that area next to, you know, the Suez Canal Zone. But no, no, the AI just doesn't care at all, so we're in no hurry to go take that over. Uh, I might want to go colonize Ethiopia next of all. Just to have that, it, it would be a pretty nice addition to the Empire. More helpful than really beating up on the Egyptians, and we would have to do that in two wars anyway, and we don't have the influence on them to make it really make sense. Looks like the UK is going back for even more Chinese lands. That'll be interesting. Now ah, let's just watch. I'm kinda curious if the British armies are just going to get overwhelmed and destroyed as soon as they attack the Chinese. But it might be that they just keep going around one another, which would be kind of entertaining. I mean, I don't think it's really feasible for the Chinese to win this war, since the Chinese AI is going to try to shovel forces into India. And once they start doing that, they're basically saying, hi, let's all just die for no reason. Alright, so we'll just keep getting that. Eventually we'll have to go for uh, technologies such as inorganic chemistry. We should probably be going for that sooner than later. I guess we'll try to get people to support that just kind of subsidies. Now, if the Chinese don't attack these British armies with the entirety of their force, which, let's actually see how many troops they have. They have a good 600,000. They have 600,000 Chinese forces against 70, almost 80,000 British, and it just doesn't seem as though they're going to bring their troops together enough to actually win any battles. So if that's the case, then... The, I don't know, I mean, the most sensible place for us to go and invade would be China. Just because clearly they're not an effective state, and we would just be able to dominate them to a pretty good deal. Cut Korea down to size, that's kind of interesting. Explains why they had to white piece the Chinese a little while ago. Yeah, so I just don't think the Chinese are going to combine their armies in an effective manner. Cool, get some prestige. We could also get prestige techs. Uh, once we get closer to first rank, then we have a higher preference for getting items off of the world market. And that'll be pretty important if we actually end up getting any capitalists at all. There are no pops of this type. Alright, well that kind of sucks. So we'll go back to taxing the rich and just not really worry so much about uh, really just not worry so much about getting and keeping capitalists for the moment the big thing is going to be getting people to work in the factories which reminds me what are our national focuses we're encouraging soldiers in far off colonial territories which is kind of neat but not really all that helpful at the moment so let's take a look at our population Greek Sicily is pretty much the largest place we've got right now, so we'll just keep encouraging our people to be craftsmen there. And in Aden, we'll also encourage our people to be craftsmen. 
Actually, no, let's not do that. We'll go for Thess Thessalia. And we'll take a look at that. Aiden doesn't really have anyone, but they do have factories. Thessalia does have a few. And we'll just upgrade those before it really needs to happen. And hopefully we'll get enough money that once we do eventually get capitalists, they'll be supported by the proceeds of our factories. Because weirdly enough, that's how capitalists work in this game. They just make money skimming off the top of the proceeds of your factories. Which you could argue is vaguely accurate, but let's not really get into that too much. Oh, and America's going to be colonizing Korea, so that's kind of weird. Taking over South Korea. Why not? Alright, and we're just pushing through. So hopefully we'll have enough colonial power to fill all these gaps. We might not, but we'll see how it plays out. Oh, it looks like we're taking attrition there, which is far less than ideal. Looks like we lost one of our dragoons because of that. Hmm. Alright, now we have two vaguely equivalent forces. And that's another reason why we need to be upgrading our... Um, our supply limits, all those technologies. The more we can avoid our troops just piling up and dying for no reason, the better. Alright, so our truce is over with the Ottomans and has been over for a little while now. They're allied with the French still, so we're not going to get involved, but we'll try to break them apart. At this point, we could pretty conceivably take over Ethiopia, but we're not going to try just yet. All that civil violence is pretty unfortunate. Uh, just because with more civil violence just takes out population in colonial regions, which we needed for our military. I'm not really sure how that's going to play out. Looks like we're having trouble getting canned food and small arms. Mainly small arm, or mainly canned food. Which is a little weird. I think we need iron steamers to be able to make the Suez Canal, so we'll press over into that technology tree. And that should go fairly quickly. And then in a few months we'll be able to get phenomenology. Which is actually a really cool uh, philosophical perspective if you ever get into looking it up. Let's not bust any unions. Sorry rich people, but you're literally only aristocrats, so it doesn't really matter. And it's weird, we don't really have enough people to get more national foci. Which is a little unfortunate. We should also probably, there's a thing that I've learned that you can do in this game, which is really helpful and pretty cool. Which, uh, so things like canned foods. We'll just buy them as much as we can. Now, it kind of hurts our economy for now, but then we'll get a really large stockpile of canned foods, and every time we need them in the future, we'll have them ready to go. And once we get the initial stockpile, uh, it doesn't matter, basically, because we'll have it all stockpiled up, and every time we need that to produce more troops, we'll already have it. So, yeah, probably a good idea to just get all of that as much as we can. We're really hemorrhaging money while we do this, but that's to be expected. Uh, I think we need more regular clothes for some of our soldiers. We do need liquor for the soldiers as well. And there we go. So we're getting our stockpile up. That should be decent. And we'll stop hemorrhaging money in a minute. That did cost us something like 100000 and we're still buying quite a bit of these artillery pieces, so that'll keep us more or less in that level of debt for a while. Or in that level of deficit for a while. But consumer goods are pretty nice to have. I've heard of some people, and this is actually pretty funny, and I don't know how to do this whatsoever, but some people have funded their economy in this game just through market speculation. Which is amazing and kind of absurd. And if I learn how to do that, I'll, I'll try to let you guys know. But I would also probably just do real market speculation at that point. 
All right, so let's see what's going on here and why is it our problem. The Italians are trying to liberate Venice, Venetia. The French are on their side, and I really, hmm, I don't want to get involved, so I'm not going to. Oh, but here's a fun thing. This is kind of gamey, and I probably shouldn't be doing this, but we can just leave that up. They they took care of that problem in um, in EU4, but in Victoria 2, you can totally just leave up the call to arms and just kind of say, oh, whoa, what? We never saw it. Which, I mean, is pretty transparent, but it keeps us allied to the Austrians so we can see how their army does. And if we decide that they're doing well enough that we can actually support them without just killing ourselves, which I don't believe whatsoever, because even if they beat the Italian forces, French troops are going to shovel in in just a few moments and probably just completely wreck them. We have a lot of anarcho-liberals. I'm not really sure why, but they're very popular recently. Oh well. Hopefully they don't rebel, even though they're probably the most rebellious pop at large. Oh, Ottoman reactionaries are going to try to turn them into a full-blown kingdom. So that's really interesting. I wouldn't... I mean, that sucks because that'll stabilize them. I was hoping they would get some sort of weird rebel. Oh, okay. Uh, let's decrease the opinion of the United States in Egypt. Alliance offer from Portugal, okay. From Switzerland, no thanks. Go ahead and get phenomenology. Sorry, Darfur, you're going to have to take some militancy. I'd rather our people in our colonial territories don't become socialists, otherwise we'll have to deal with roving bands of socialist rebels. And that's not very much fun. Alright, and hopefully this group will go fight these guys, or really anyone anywhere else, and this group of Ottoman reactionaries will be able to overthrow the government. That would be pretty much the best course of action for us. Or, the best way events could unfold. Looks like the French have shown up, and... Oh, okay, so yeah, there it's happening. It looked for a moment like they wouldn't just come smash all the Austrian armies, but now they're just absolutely destroying them. And that's really going to be it for Austria. They won't be able to deal with those forces. They're too spread out. Um, yeah, and the French are coming in in force. Maybe they'll win that one, but on a lar on large, they're not winning this. Actually... Yeah, no, there they go. So, that's bad news for Austria. Bribing officials, yeah, let's go ahead and just do that. Oh, and we've got... Oh, okay, cool, we've got striped Korea. Interesting. Good work, America, I guess. Bloody strike. Hmm... Let's go ahead and do that. We'll get more socialist people. Not that it really matters, because no one's really even working in our factories now, so them being socialists isn't really an issue in any way. But it is something that can happen. And it looks like Ottoman reactionaries are just moments away from pushing them into being an actual empire again, as opposed to whatever they were calling themselves for a little bit. And we'll just roll in and attack them. We'll set up a small little rally point right there. And yeah, we'll just get ready to start marching in on the Ottomans. That's only part of an army. Let's see, we'll just combine these navies just because. And let's see. We have actually a lot, a lot fewer in the way of soldiers being risen up from these territories or being recruited from those territories than I would have anticipated. Oh, and we definitely need to start splitting this group up. Okay, so we lost a Dragoon, and an Artillery, and an Infantry, so that's not ideal. Now I'll split these up into groups of seven soldiers, or seven, yeah, I guess soldiers, uh, brigades. Six or seven, probably six in some instances. We'll do seven, though, just because that keeps it more or less balanced. 
and they can be carried away by our navy. We'll do six right there, and hopefully we'll get a few more engineers into that. Alright, it looks like an engineer is coming, but we'll probably need to build more engineers in Africa. We'll just build two more and hope that that's enough. Load these guys up. Alright, and really just the day that these reactionaries take over the Ottoman government, we're going to declare war. It's a bit unfortunate that they're going to get a stable regime, or at least a regime capable of stability. Alright, congrats, you're an absolute monarchy now. Uh, as a reward, you get to lose your capital. Or, well, your old capital. Yeah, in fact, maybe we should just justify war and try to acquire a state. It is kind of risky. Let's give it a try. Ooh, and if we go jingoistic, then we're going to not be able to support our factories. So that might be a problem for our factories for a moment. Alright, let's pray really hard that we manage to get to a point where we're not going to just be over 25 infamy, because good god, that could destroy us. Korea free trade? Sure. We'll accept the Belgian alliance, though we don't really need to, and it doesn't really help us. Probably shouldn't have done that. Not really sure why I did, just it was there. Alright, and uh, yeah. We'll go ship more forces over. We probably didn't need to spend all this money on our military immediately, and we are hemorrhaging money, of course, because we can only tax people at 50% now. So, sorry middle class, but it looks like you're getting taxed. Just because we don't want to take loans if we don't need to. Alright, 6% uh, tariffs will keep us more or less at a decent budgetary place. Gonna lose a bunch of factories, but we never really had factories to begin with, so it doesn't matter all that much. Still no capitalists by the looks of it. Alright, and it seems like at this point our gamble is already paying off. And we'll probably just go for Konya. Ottoman Menace. They are pretty menacing, aren't they? And we may as well take Etria. Just because. Just because it's there. Alright, 7.4 Infamy is a lot, but not so much that it'll kill us. That's a decent middle ground. We could go take Aleppo, and that'll give us a coastline, which would be pretty cool. Uh, just all the way from India up to Aleppo, but we'll not do that yet. Maybe later. Unfortunately, it looks like our people are losing militancy for whatever reasons. Apparently, having a government that reforms and whatnot is, is nice to them in some way. Crazy thoughts. Alright, and let's see, we'll drop these troops off in the rest of Africa and see if we can't produce a full army out of them. Pluck up these guys and these dudes. Oh, and yeah, the British did manage to get a little bit more of China. And we'll just drop these guys off in Africa as well. Alright, we'll drop these guys off over by Iraq. And we'll just bring these guys forward. We'll need to get more units to support them, and I'm not sure if we're constructing any yet. But uh, we definitely need at least, let's say, five or six infantry and a couple dragoons. Hmm. We could add the Egyptians to our sphere of influence. I don't really want to do that, but we're also not going to be able to attack them for a while just due to where our infamy is at. But pretty soon we'll be able to declare war on the Ottomans. We'll take Konya, as well as Thrace. And then, yeah, then conceivably we will be able to uh, form the Byzantine Empire, though we're not really going to want to do that. 
Looks like we have more troops coming up. Unfortunate how much civil violence we're getting. Alright, we will add the Egyptians to our sphere. We can always remove them later. Alright, we have machine tools. That's pretty good. Uh, that means all we'll need now is iron steamers. Ooh, look at that. Egyptian tomb discovered. Alright, cool. And we already we basically doubled the size of our military in this episode alone. Which is very nice. Makes us a really uh well, makes us possibly a relevant player in the game later on, so that's very nice. Uh, what does this group need? It needs an engineer. And that's an engineer, so that's cool. Alright, we'll ship these guys over. Australia developed the communist agenda. Alright, and we can go to war against the Ottomans. Hopefully no countries have managed to get their influence uh, with them up at all, and it doesn't look like they have. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we're running almost late right now with this episode. So I'm going to go ahead and probably just end it here. I'll get the next one out fairly quickly because I'll probably just play through it. Um, well, no, I won't. I'll, I'll, I'll do all the editing that I need to do to get this episode out and then just probably move on into the next one. I'm also going to start another series. I've already recorded the first couple videos for it, but I haven't done anything past that or uploaded them. So, um... Yeah, this video will probably come out around the same time as another series, also in Victoria 2, where I'm going to be playing as the Confederate States of America and taking two radically different approaches on how to play it. Uh, so yeah, that'll be interesting. Uh, okay, so the basic idea for the uh, CSA game is going to be, as one version, I'm just going to occupy the United States until the end of time as a way of preventing them to conquer me. And as another version, I'm going to just try to be a successful state on my own. Uh, this kind of came to me because when I was first playing as the CSA years and years ago, I thought I was doing very well, but then the U.S. just came in and rolled me and annexed me. There might also be a third version of that where I just try to stay within my confines and play the diplomatic and economic game to be so powerful that the U.S. can't annex me outright. So we'll, we'll see how that ends up playing out. And at any rate, back to this game, we're just going to go after Konya and simultaneously Thrace in this one war. Hopefully we'll be able to occupy the Ottomans enough that anarcho-liberals take over their state and they turn into another weird dictatorship. And then once they're another weird dictatorship, they'll have another set of crises with political legitimacy and the fact that they won't have literally any at all. And hopefully that'll you know, upset their people enough that they will rebel and the Ottomans will lose all this territory in Europe, so we won't have to go bother them about it. And it looks like we already might have a bit of a crisis forming for the Bulgarians to take over Bulgaria proper. And if that happens, then we're going to have a very weird and kind of gross Bulgaria that has both Bulgaria and North Macedonia, since that is one of their cores, but nothing in between to connect, since we control Romelia. So if that crisis does happen, we might want to re release them and then just kind of play it out and see how that goes. But at any rate, we're at a very good spot for just getting free lands taken away from all of our weird enemy states in the region. In fact, we might even be able to get the Armenians to have their own free state over here, uh, which isn't really necessarily something we want since they'll probably come into being as a civilized nation. And if that happens, then we can't just roll through them like we did with Iraq. Syria, though, if we're lucky, will come in as an unsiv, and then we can just blow through them. At any rate, it'll be pretty tempting to take the form Byzantium decision. I won't do that um, just on my own. I don't plan on doing that. I might if it comes to the point where we really need that infamy reduction. Although, uh, really, it all just remains to be seen how that'll play out. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. We have a really impressive amount of Africa, all things considered. And hopefully we'll be able to push all of these various countries out of this portion and just form a nice empire blobbed in this area. It seems like a lot to hope for, and it is. Although we have around 50 years to do it, 50 years and change. And the wars in this game really do speed up once we get to Great War eras, as makes sense.
So yeah, we'll see how it all plays out. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you're interested at all, please check out the Confederate series. That'll be coming out fairly soon. Have a great day.